Hello and welcome back everyone, Anthwolf here with more Pillars of Eternity. About to enter, well, some sort of ruins, perhaps a secret temple according to a bloodstained and tattered note we discovered earlier. Maybe we'll find out what happened to Lady Elise here. Deerford Ruins. So, if this is the same Deerford Ruins we found earlier, we know there's an entrance to Tri... Uh, Tri... Will? Tri... Gills? I forgot how he pronounced his name. The Lever Tanner, anyway. His shop over here somewhere. Keeping quiet. Oh, there's no memorial here. This effigy is made from several crooked sticks tied together with rough twine. It casts an ominous flickering shadow on the wall. So it's some sort of, well, mausoleum. Gain cultists. And immediately they're aggressive. Gain Initiate's Hood. We don't know much about Skane. You give me any more gifts and people will start thinking you're playing favorites. Apparently they somehow relate to Skane and Wodica are somehow interconnected though. I wonder if they'll tell us in our journal. Deities. Skane. The god of defiance, violent rebellion, and secret hatred covered Plop's resentment and envy, frequently depicted as a disfigured and scarred slave and worshipped worship by most often by the subjugated and destitute. Well, there you go. Oh, boy. See now what the flame has shown us? Hmm? And the fire shows me something new. Wow, so many traps. And this looks like like a main hall. Yeah. Hmm. It's probably a bad idea to attack people just outside of it. We may gain people's attention. I think people know we're here. Light, flame, and sound. We'll keep to ourselves. What another balloon. So we could pick this lock. No doubt, though, if we continue searching, we may find the key. That was a dead end there. So you have to take our yeah. party members. Hmm. Oh, oh dear God. 
That could have been bad. Oh, great. They found us. Evie. Come get me, please. Thank you. Let's go. Huh? Let's go. What? Let's burn the Yeah, we triggered that trap, so be it. At least the traps aren't too harmful that we've um, accidentally triggered so far. Our skulls have been lashed to this wooden effigy. Let's deactivate fast mode now. Light, flame, and sound. We'll keep to ourselves. Some ripple sponge. Looks like this is the main walkway into that hall there. So those are likely over like back entrances. I don't mind them um, crossing the bridge though. Gives us more time to explore the ruins. Looks like there's a lot of blood. I'm guessing this is blood leading up to the hallway. Looks like my mind feels of steam. Looks like for our focus, the grieving mother can go over, that's her like standard 37, maybe her maximum out of combat focus, but she did have 70 there. I can do that. Let's uh, drop a big save and let's see what's within this main chamber. My thoughts will be as silent as my feet. As you approach the blood pool, the fish, the vicious liquid churns and bubbles. You feel the essence rising to the surface, reaching out to you, whispering. Someone should clean that up. Some strange power seems to be animating the blood. I'm going to hazard a guess and say that, whatever it is, it isn't benevolent. A place of death. We should not linger here. A bubbling cauldron of Skane's hateful seed. He may be snivelling and cowardly in his ways, but he's never lacked for focus. 
This is the work of something foul. We should keep moving. Well, it's an option. Let us extend our soul. This may be a terrible idea. The faint whispers resolve into a cacophony of voices. You imagine yourself surrounded by a hundred men and women. Their naked flesh is scourged and bloody or skinned and covered with flies. Their eyes are missing, replaced with glittering black stones. The voices cry out in unison. What's this? Another soul come to rage and burn? Or merely to watch? You may be a long time in waiting. Our work today is already finished. You were all sacrificed to Skein, weren't you? We were sacrifices to the whims and hungers of the rich and powerful. But what we gave here, that was our decision. Our fury burned within us, and crenched and unfed. But hate can be fashioned into a weapon by those willing to pay the price. In life we were weak, but in death we made a choice, and that choice carries power. What kind of power? If you must ask, then you have never had need of revenge. It is a shame there is nothing in you we could use. Hold, I would know what you've done here. The pool itself begins to ripple. With a sound of a dissonant chorus of perverse laughter, it rakes at your ears. The lapping blood stirs a large metal cage. Half submerged in the centre of the pool, and it creaks loudly as it rocks back and forth on a rusted pulley, as if in answer to your question. Wait, let me ask you more about this place. The time for questions is of the time for questions is over, watcher. This corpse is bent forward as if watching her life's blood trickle away. Blood congeals under this corpse slashed throat. This man's arms are cut open from elbow to wrist. Huh? Well, this isn't uncomfortable at all. Huh? So this was a ritual f to gain power for revenge. Ishania. Something over there. Crude symbol has been painted onto this canvas in streaks of something that looks like blood. And it probably is. What? That's settled. Oh, nice. We managed to disarm that trap. The final journal of Jonas. My son, tomorrow I become the effigy. Tomorrow I become Skane's embodiment on Aurora. Tomorrow my master chokes on his own whip. For months we met by secret conclave to plot our landlord's demise, all the while working the fields as if our hearts were content. Skane teaches us to plot with the mind while keeping one's face impassive, inscrutable. Fair fights are for those with armies. The quiet slave is our whetstone, our focus. In his worship, our cause finds focus, clarity, and possibility. Tomorrow my master chokes on his own whip. By the time you read this, I will be dead. I pray Skane does not abandon me for speaking of my plotting, but a son deserves to know why his father has died. For I volunteered to be, to be the effigy. Skane will inhabit my body using this old farmer's simple flesh as a puppet of godly rage. I have been shaved and anointed. Tomorrow morning I will be your father in name only. As my manhood will as my manhood will be removed, my nose and ears removed, and my useless mortal eyes will be replaced with flint stones, through which Skane might see the world. My son, I am sorry for the lies I have told you these past few seasons, but Skane demands secrecy. Even your mother knows nothing of my furtive service to the quiet slave. 
Curse my name if you must, but never weep for me, for I die with the, for the betterment of our community, to smite our lord's corruption from the face of Aurora. And we have the Crypt Master's Key, which I'm guessing would allow us entrance to here. We'll try it in a moment. This cabinet is finely crafted from a deep, rich wood, however many of its shells are broken. The skin it's scripture. Feel free to read it. Seems like a very, um, religious, um, script. And a few lockpicks. I'll see what I can find. Any more traps lining the floor here? Yes. And the fire shows me something new. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. We'll deal with this with this god first, this fanatic. Let's go. Dead on. Small wicker statues of black stone eyes are placed between the flickering candles. Nice and quiet. Let's go. Margrin's fire casts light in dark places. Clean for often customs and a lock pick. Oh, hello. Well, this is awkward. I wonder where you came from. I'm hoping none of you, none of these cultists happen to be Lady Alice, and that they've accidentally may have slaughtered while walking through the temple here. Keeping an eye out. I'm sure the quest log would update if I had done so. Is there anyone here there is? Crap! Hmm. Oh, that's just, just, that's just triggered a trap. Let's just take, take the chance. They shall see nothing while I see much. Hello. See now what the flame has shown us. Ooh, another major endurance potion, thank you. Oh, the Crypt Master's key. Sure. And what lies beyond this door? Let me get comfortable and then let us find out. A large, bull-necked man in a hood helps a young elven woman down from a glass chamber, connected to a dizzying array of cables and machinery. Her skin and clothing glisten with fresh blood. You may feel a little light-headed for the next hour or two, but that will pass. Have a meal and get some sleep when you return to town. A transfusion. <laughs> The transfusion will be smoothest if you relax and rest. 
The implanted essence already has a hold on your mind, so fighting it will be useless. And I hope our new visitor does not complicate matters overly. The implanted essence? I don't think I'm gonna like you for some reason. What is going on here? Subversion. The black sheep cousin of justice. Or haven't you heard Lord Heron's tale of woe about a missing daughter and an impending marriage? He's sent his soldiers to scour the village while he bides his time at the Dracogen Inn. I don't expect you to understand what I'm doing. Neither the rituals of Scan nor the labors of Animancy meet with much approval in polite society. But unsightliness reminds polite society that there are limits. When no one pays attention to the excesses and debaucheries of a lord, you give them something they can't look away from. What are you talking about? Lord Heron's been telling everyone she's his daughter. He brought her all the way out here just to avoid anyone who might know differently. She's his niece, and she's carrying his child. Okay, I was not expecting that. Continue. Her own kin? I know how I deal with that one. Why would he do that? Heron's own wife's delivered nothing but Hollowborn. Now he's got no heir, and his sister's child, Elise, is reaching the age to marry. Without progeny of his own, Heron's legacy would pass to her issue. So, he found a way to continue his own noble line. By putting his child in this girl, his own niece. Couldn't he have gotten a child by some other means? Not a highborn heir. Even if he disposed of his own wife by some means, what family would marry their fertile daughter off to him? You can see the problem with this foolishness about blood and birth, I hope. What's this about Anamancy? Is it part of your plan to destroy him? This isn't just about hair and the girl. It's about the corrupting influences of power and wealth. How people of privilege, people like Herod, are so often insulated from the consequences of their actions. The charged essence of dozens of maltreated slaves and underlings is already taking root in her mind. Once it's established, it'll drive her to murder her uncle, her aunt, and anyone foolish enough to get in her way. People won't be able to look away from Herod's sins then. Seems like a lot of trouble to go through when a simple lynch mob would do. They don't get a lot of things right, but it's kind of thing they know what to do with. I do not wish to destroy Nestor Heron. I wish to end his entire rotten line. His name will become a curse among strangers. The deeds of his house will be eclipsed by his ruin. Foes will hear his name and shudder with pity. And any relatives who should survive him will abandon their fortunes just to rid themselves of the association. Watcher, do not let this girl and her child become fodder for revenge. Let me touch her mind, I can free her from this snare, as well as from the memories that hold her captive. Yeah, actually, let's do that. I don't agree with what this nobleman has done, but I don't see why we should let the girl suffer. Yeah, do it. The grieving mother bows her head. Thank you, Watcher. You feel her reach out, persistent yet gentle. Alias does not move, but the grieving mother trembles with exertion, and the air round her rings with the sound of chimes. At last she collapses, her energy spent. Restrain throbs in her mind. For a moment, Alia's eyes close. When they open again, her expression is blank. But as she takes in the scene before her, you, Wymond, and the machinery in a strange dark room, her confusion turns to fear, and she lets out a choked cry. Kill them. All of them. If 
she can't destroy Heron, then we can destroy his legacy with her. Crap. We might need a defender. Oh, and we had some taxes collected. Immediately, let's um, try and possess people. Actually, use that on a cultist instead. Endurance. Drop your pillar of holy fire. Holy hell. Looks like someone had a pillar of holy fire themselves and used it on endurance there. The young woman blinks at you and takes a few steps back. Stay away. I don't know what happened here. You wandered into a trap. She looks around at a dead cultist and the pools of blood, her eyes widening in fear and confusion. But what? She wrenches forward and holding her head. Haley has wings. I can hardly remember a thing. She mutters something in the, in the dialect of Rutuai, then Valalian. Vanomeno. My name is Alias. Alir. The opening notes of the false knight. Aye. Her fingers twitches, brushing over the swelling over her swelling abdomen. She looks at you, a question in her mind. You are a young noble who was who has taken who are, who was taken advantage of by unscrupulous relatives. She nods absently. I also know that I can't go back to the village, though I don't remember why, and I certainly can't stay here. There's a temple on the edge of town. I am sure the clergy will help you find some place safe. It's good advice, and I won't look back. I think we're gonna have a um oh, hello. Our cultist toad again. Wayman's key. I wonder if we're gonna end up having a couple of harsh words with um the nobleman. Thick liquid bubbles within the tank releasing a pungent scent. Motes of essence swirl in the mixture. Keeping quiet. A one handed dagger once again. The skinning knife. A gift passed from mother to daughter used to remove height from various hardy creatures of the tundra. And Wayman's notebook. The looping scribbles are difficult to read, but as you flip through the pages, you can make out several passages. Near the beginning, you read. Will be a suitable place for my experiments. There's an abundance of space, and more importantly, the locals are content to ignore it. I could probably cons... You skip several pages ahead. Willing volunteers. The legacy has brought many grievances to the service, and capturing the essence is primarily a matter of timing. The ritual of the effigy serves a good template for. You scan the middle of the book. Died and their essence evaporated. Next time I'll have I'll have to try an a uh, smaller concentration of the region to. Return to the last page. 
Noble from Defiance B. Results were mostly consistent across the other subjects. The challenge is always applying the method to an unwilling participant, but a situation may prove an advantage. If I can bring those memories from her to of her uncle to the forefront, it might render her essence more susceptible. How much damage does that do? A little bit more. Yeah. Huh? Oh, there's a lever here. Or a lever, whichever way you know, like to pronounce it. Keeping quiet. We'll have to be careful, Durance's health is extremely low. We can't right. afford to get him into too many battles. My thoughts will be as silent as my feet. Uh. I'll try your not your mind blades, your mind lance. Right. I'll see what I can find. I can do that. Camping supplies, well, actually, I just—I was just saying we should rest up. It's a good thing we actually had the grieving mother in our party. It helped us um, resolve that situation with um, Elise without her being subverted by that essence of revenge. I suppose we can call it a major adventure is added. It ex expires in one day. An average reputation bonus. Uh, Kana, why don't you, um, why don't you go on that one? Another camping site, it seems. This crude symbol has been carved, been painted onto the canvas with what, with what looks like blood. Ah, these are the ladders that lead up to the Tanner's um, household. Okay, with that in mind then, let's continue exploring the ruins before we do anything else. Is there anything else down here? There I'll is. There's probably more cultists around here and they may Let's not realise that their leader is dead. That's what Durance gets for being unable to disarm the trap. He deserves to be hit by it. Let's 
skein bone. Okay, that's a lot of people. on too much trouble. Margrin's fire casts light in <laughs> Clefarfin stalking boots. Plus time is in damage to flank targets. Oh. Well, that'll certainly come in handy. Nice and slow. Skin edge scripture, some more lockpicks once again. This is a very large temple. Lay in low. Let's continue working at it though. Hmm. Dunrid Row. The practices and origins of Dunrid Row. Thoughts will be as silent as my feet. We'll use fast mode to get around a little. Since we complete the main quest here. Tamak went down. I'm not really worrying about using my special abilities in this place. My mind is sharp as steel. Yeah, we can handle most things in here. So I'm just letting my characters just bludgeon their way mm -hmm. through the area. Secrets whisper here, I shall listen for them. I can do that. Ah, we're back here now. This path ends in a precipice. The remains of a ruined bridge lie on the other side of the chasm. The darkness below continues as far as you can see. Broken stone pillars, remnant of a missing bridge, rise from the abyss. Across the gap, you think you see a long stone bridge. Wooden beams protrude from the stones on either side of the chasm. Despite their age, they look sturdy enough to hold a grappling hook and rope. 
So yeah, we could use the grappling hook. But that's fine. We know what's on the other side of that area. We don't know what's here though, which is what I'm more interested in. They shall see nothing while I see much. Hello, trap. Oh, there was a trap sitting in the carpet. Ready, watcher. Yeah. Wow, you're petrified for a long time. Yeah. Save once again. I'm on the trail. Plate armor there. More lockpicks. A list of names. This, this crease sheet of paper contains a list of names. Some have been crossed off. You did. Leaves window open at night. Small house on the edge of Kindle Vale. Higerto visiting old Valeria. Doesn't speak Adrian. Keeps to himself. Won't be missed. Typhus lives in a small encampment on the road to Logholm. Takes solitary walks each morning at sunrise. Blemis, his guild, his parents left, leave him alone after temple services in Goldandag. Senlis visits a mistress in Balrich every third Falstag. Get him on the road. Check Gilded Vale and Andra's gift. May find more interested parties there. And an old dungeon key. A list of other people that am um, they may want to borrow for their ritual I'm guessing <laughs> the torture rack is splattered in blood and gouged by fingernails. Keeping an eye out. And that leads us back to here. So there's only a couple of more rooms worth checking out. Nice and slow. Is this carpet also trapped? No, I'm surprised. Okay. 
I'm on the trail. A man in bloody robes lies dead upon the table. A heavy crust of blood surrounds his mouth. And eyes. Yeah, those cultists stare. Warden quickly said to names, I think he's doing this mostly for his research. It's a whole thing with apparently another Anamancer as well. Who's went a bit too crazy with his power. How's our experience doing right now? Not bad, we're getting fairly close to level 10. So this will bring us um, into, what is his name? Trigill, that's his name. To bring us into his shop. Will he attack us? Probably. He's likely a cultist. I'll see what I can find. Another f I thought we've already read the final journey of Jonas. Guess he wrote two journals. A simple test. Let's quick save. What are you effigy's eyes? Sabrin, stop him. Yep. Curious key. I guess that would have allowed us access to here. Well, we have plenty of quests to turn in. I think this has turned out to be quite a long episode, but we'll continue and just resolve the situations. And then we can start afresh the next session. It's getting quite late here, it's almost one o'clock in the morning, but I say I'd like to continue. So, we'll do the farmer's plight first of all. The farmer will probably still be out even though it's dark. Let's go see him. Traveller. Any sign of that ogre? Or its head? Is this what you were looking for? Blazes, that thing's even uglier than I thought, and look at the size of it. He takes the head and both arms from you, heedless of the stinking drizzle of blood that fouls his clothes. I've got big plans for this. You raid right here. He disappears in the house and returns with a blunderbuss in his hands. I call it the lead spitter. It belonged to my father and served me in the Saints' War. It's old but sturdy, and it packs a real punch. Should be more useful to someone like yourself these days. Oh, and 600 coppers for your trouble. Um, no, oh, keep the money. You could use it to rebuild your herd. He runs again, this time with embarrassment. That's mighty thoughtful of you. There'll be another 600, six, 600? Six months before any of these can breed anyway. Although... This run's still looking too small. I don't expect to get any good letters out of it. I'd just as soon not have it weaken the rest of my stock. Why don't you take it? Give me one less mouth to feed anyway. We've gained a piglet! This young pig is roughly the size of a small dog. It half trots, half runs at your side in an effort to keep pace and snorts appreciatively when its flanks are scratched. <laughs> um, there you go, grieving mother. You now have a companion, and we have a unique two handed blunderbuss. Hmm. 
It bypasses a lot of damage reduction. It does a lot of damage. We have a lot of items in our inventory right now. I'm going to have to reorganize these. We have plenty of things we can sell off as well, I'm sure. Let's pop over to the temple first of all to see if Lady Alias made it here safely. Before we go speak to her father, that is. Her uncle. Her uncle. Has nothing to say to us. That's fine. We could have asked about the issue with the Hollowborn, but I don't mind not learning about that. Let's travel to the inn. Is there any other quests we need to look at here? Not right now. Oh, the nest egg, of course. And diner, hen diner. Let us pass on to you the dragon's egg that we found. Is there anything else I can do for you? I got some handy ointments if you're braving the roads anytime soon. Um, I found a dragon egg. Hilia's feathered tits. How do you manage that? I found the nest you spoke of. Hope those worms didn't give you too much trouble. Let's see her then. Amazing. Not a single crack. She hefts the egg onto the back of her wagon and rummages among her shelves. Here, take this. I think you need to grow a good, strong pick-me-up. Should come in handy with the kind of scrapes you seem to get into. And come see me anytime you need potions or ingredients, alright? I got a special special price for my friends. Another potion of major endurance. I'll take these as well. And we'll take these as well. Potion of power. Yeah, we'll take that as well. Ooh, we'll take the garnets. And the Adra. It costs us a lot of copper. But I'm gathering ingredients ready for if and when we may need them. We do need to be level 12 to um, create our enchant superb um, enchantments into our runes. A villager who was barely injured. Huh. What happened before I walked into the inn here? Anyhow, let, let us rest up. Greetings. Um. Let's see what rooms you have. Yeah, we'll rest up in the dragon's lair once more. Wait, what? Where's the Lord disappear to? Instead, in this place we've got Danda Valera. Valera. You see a man open the door to a house, slow with fatigue. He steps inside, unlacing his boots, rubbing his temples, wrinkle of a smile lighting his face as he moves into a generous kitchen. He calls for someone, slicing himself some bread. The house creaks gently in response. His lips purse and he pads out of the kitchen into a large room with a staircase. 
Chewing slowly, he takes the stairs one at a time, calling once more. No response. His body freezes for a moment as he walks into a room upstairs. Nothing on the lone bed but an abundance of faded felt toys. Moving fast, he checks each room, his calls growing more urgent. No response. Any sign of exhaustion is gone, replaced with limber panic. He checks cupboards, baths, anywhere a child might hide. Nothing. Then a letter next to the door he came in from. A queer symbol on a wax seal. One he's seen before. He crumples, shoulders shaking against a hard wall. Nobody sees him, sees him weep. Where's Lord Heron then? Probably somewhere where we're not going to um, encounter a lot of battle. I'm guessing here. Yep. This is going to be an awkward conversation. Let us um, close the door behind us. This isn't ominous at all. What are you doing up here? Unless... Have you news of my daughter? I've got to get her out of this wretched village. I found Alias. My daughter? Is her... Is she safe? I let her go. That can't be. She's... What happened? You know exactly what I discovered. I don't know what you're referring to, but I've heard enough already. Take this, and let's put this unpleasantness behind us. Rumors travel fast, certainly faster than caravans. Do you really want to take that chance? Very well. Now. I really must get back on the road. We are considered a hero now in Deford Village. I didn't really want the copper to be perfectly honest. We lost. Opinion in Defiance Bay. You know what? I don't really care if that's the kind of um, clientele we have to deal with in Defiance Bay. Hmm. Wolf Heights, Elder Wolf Fang. How did that quest end? I sent her to start a new life far from her uncle. Hmm. Well, I think we can call an end to this video. Call an end to this session. I've had a good aim. Um, a good day recording all this Pillars of Eternity. But when we come back, I don't think there's anything else standing in our way to heading towards as a client rebag. Uh, clear ban relag that's the one and we can actually travel there directly from Deerfoot village because we unlocked the the pathway through the crossing and hopefully find out what the leaden key agents sent from divine's bay were after here and once we can find that out not only will it progress us hopefully with the main storyline but we can return to um dunrid row in brackenbury there and see if Lady Webb has anything else of interest to tell us. So when we come back, I will have likely went to the merchant. I'll sell off a lot of the fine equipment that we have. Maybe keep the exceptional stuff because we may use that in the future. Let's have a look. But yeah, I'll sell off a lot of miscellaneous goods that we aren't going to be using for anyone in the party. And then we'll get heading over to those ruins and see what else we can do. So this has been Anthwolf and I hope you've all enjoyed and I hope you all take care. 
and I'll see you for more Pillars of Eternity in the future. Until then, bye-bye now.